2 has entered the podcast. Welcome, welcome back, people, to Player 2 has entered the podcast. I am your co-host, Michael, a.k.a. MC Paperstacks, and with me, as always, for the whole year, is my co-host with the co-most... Derek, a.k.a. Full Metal Merc. We did it. Woo! We made it. A whole year we've been doing the podcast. Do you Crazy. know what today is? It's, it's our anniversary. anniversary. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've been doing the, th- the damn thing for one year. I'm so happy to be able to celebrate this landmark with my bestie. How you feeling right now, man? I feel great. I feel great. I feel good. I feel accomplished. I feel like, yes, this accomplished. Is, I feel like, like we did something. Lot. We did a yeah. thing. To dedicate whatever time to something that's not work <laughs> consistently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's pretty it's pretty impressive. We, impressive. Impressive. Uh, we created something. And it's something that I'm proud of. And it's something that gives me life. It's something that I look forward to every week. And, you know, hey, man raise my imaginary glass of well i have an actual thing of coffee over here here's to another year yeah i've got some green tea over here so yeah click click (laughs) (laughs) it's plastic (laughs) that'll work too (laughs) so yeah and we we really couldn't have done it without the support of our fans and our listeners i want to give a special shout out and our families a special shout out to my wife to your wife who've put in work and suggestions and support for both of us. Special shout out to our fans, uh, especially those who like to interact with us and come on the show, all our previous guests. Special shout out to Ron B., who I really love interacting with on a listener question level. And if you're free, maybe sometime we can have you on the show this year. I think that would be cool for everybody to meet you. But yeah, yeah, and and we have some exciting announcements actually to make. I wanted to have some new music for this episode. Is it raining over there? Fuck yeah! Wow, it's raining I hard. It was somebody messing around in the kitchen. Oh, mm. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Well, we're gonna turn this into the quiet storm. <laughs> yeah, it's raining outside, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we we have some exciting things to announce. I wanted to have some music for the new show, and that's kind of a little bit. That's the only thing that I couldn't get in time. It's a little delayed. I've reached out to a few people about doing some music for us. Haven't really heard back. I may end up just doing it myself like I did originally. But we did commission some art. And it's coming down just as hard as that rain. Yeah, it's (laughs) hail, actually. It's hailing right now? Oh, hell no. See see what I did there? Yes. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we actually were able to commission new art for the show in celebration of our anniversary. You should be able to see that now, depending on the device you're listening to, because we put it up as this week's art, as well as the overall art for the channel. And another thing that we did is we started a Patreon. And I know that seems a little presumptuous. Trust me, I'm feeling very imposterish right now. But it was suggested to us by a few fans. And honestly... Considering that I have put real, actual money into this podcast with the commissioning of art and I'm looking to hire people for music and improvements to the podcast, I think now is the time. So just know that anybody that decides to become a patron of the show, the money that you spend will 100% go into making the show better. Just know that. Just to kind of briefly cover what you can enjoy, because we want to make it not just a way for you to support us, but also a way for you to get access to things you normally wouldn't get access to and give you some cool stuff, you know, that a fan might really appreciate. Patrons will have early access to our episodes at the earliest level. That means as soon as I'm done editing, I'm popping it up on the Patreon and you can go there and listen to it early instead of having to wait until Sunday. So you you get it a couple of days early at the earliest or Saturday, depending on when I get done editing. We'll (laughs) also shout you out as a supporter on the show right now it's every episode if we blow up for some whatever weird reason and again i don't anticipate this happening at all (laughs) we may have to make it like the first time you join it's happened to less interesting people let's just say that (laughs) you know what that's fair it sounds a little like we're throwing shade but i agree with you in in a way (laughs) so that's that's true (laughs) also 
at the lowest level, you'll get a free sticker with our logo. So you can just slap that mm-hmm. bad boy on the side of something so everybody can see that you're a fan of Player 2 as entered the podcast. Oh, yeah. At a higher level, you'll actually be able to get early access to episodes of the Derek X Mike Anime Challenge. Yes, it's coming back. And yes, we're working on episodes right now, so look forward to that. You'll also get a free set of show-themed coasters. You bump up, you're actually going to be able to get access to outtakes and extra show content that we delete from published episodes since we do edit. And there's a lot of side, funny, how the sausage is made type stuff that I'm sure that people would enjoy if they're big fans. We'll also, and this is thanks to Gamer Goodies and more, thank you, Derek, once per month, you'll actually get emailed a one-time use code for 10% off any purchase you make at Gamer Goodies and more. And we'll get you a show-themed mug so you can enjoy a tasty beverage when you tune in. And then finally, our top tier. Patrons get everything from the previous tiers, of course. We're also going to get you a t-shirt. And then once per month, you get 20% off one purchase at Gamer Goodies and more. You'll actually get priority to suggest to us a topic to cover on an upcoming episode. You get access or priority to ask us any questions you want that will be answered on the show. And you'll get priority to suggest the games that I play on Twitch. And uh, I think my favorite part is probably the name of the tiers. Do you recall what we named them? Yeah, it was uh, the first tier was casual. Mm -hmm. The second was gamers TM. No, the second, the second second is lowercase g gamers. Yeah. Uh, the third is gamers TM, and the final tier and best tier is capital G gamers. Bitch. Capital G gamers. Probably the only <laughs> time you would actually proudly wear that moniker. Right. And <laughs> I put a white mage as the symbol for that because I feel like if you're gonna play Final Fantasy the most hardcore, it's four white mages. That's how you got to do it. That's mm. a capital G gamer move. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought we would have a little bit of fun with the fact that it's our anniversary and play a little game. You ready to play a game? Would you like to play a game? Would you like to play a game? <laughs> yes. It's going to be a little bit yes. less threatening than that, but yeah. Okay. So, w- what I did is I went back into our past and I pulled the titles of three of our previous episodes out of context for you to put in context, if you can remember. So we're going back a year on some of these, of course, so it might be tough. And we're always naming our episodes after something referenced in the show, if you haven't already noticed. So here goes the first one. You ready? Yep. All right. The episode is titled, Put That CPU in the Butt or Something. Okay. What were we talking about? So I remember it had something to do with, um, oh, what is that movie we watched? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, what is the name of the movie? Damn it. Give me the name of the movie, because I know what it is. I just can't think of it. It takes place in a galaxy far, far away. Okay. So we were talking about something Star Wars-y, but we, I had just watched the movie with one of the black guys from Saturday Night Live where he was a radio show host. And he was like, kept talking about, girl, I would love to just take a bite out of your butt. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. Completely off the mark. So what we were talking about was the Mandalorian when they had those super robot soldiers and how if you took out their head, you took out the robot. And we said that's not very efficient. (laughs) You should put their CPU in the butt so that way when somebody goes for the head, they're still operational. Damn. I told you. Oh, that rain is back. Hey, rain. Or or is it hail again? Is Is it the apocalypse at your house right now? Could be. Oh my goodness. Well we're gonna we're gonna power through the apocalypse. Alright, you ready for the next one? Yep. Alright, you're zero out of three so far. We'll see how you do. Alright, the next title is Okay. Three, two, one. That was Thunder! Yeah, that was thick. I felt that in my feet. I felt it and I'm all the way over here. That's crazy. Well I mean we live pretty you much in the same it? no no no. There it's not raining here, or at least not in my basement. I can't tell. There's no windows down here. Wow. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Let me try that again. Okay, the title is, okay, three, two, one, let's snooze. Something to do with Cowboy Bebop. Judges? Uh, eh. uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> All right, you're close. We had a guest on that episode, Sean, a.k.a. Emperor Remiel, and we were talking about Cowboy Bebop and how good the music was, and he said for the longest time that his alarm to wake up in the morning was the opening theme. 
So I made a joke. Okay, three, two, one. I'm not ready to get up yet. So you said three, two, one. Let's snooze. <laughs> so that's what that title's from. Come on, Derek. Hey, I'm sucking. <laughs> I'm trash. All right. I don't I, t- I don't deserve wisdom. <laughs> it's okay. This this one I think you're going to get because this is based off a story that you broke. Well, I mean broke by by you reported on the show. It's not like you're out in the field like I found it first. I got the scoop. Hey, you don't, you and don't that's know the hard me. truth. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> you know what? You're at this place enough to where you may have actually gotten the scoop. So, okay. if you win this, I'll consider you have won the challenge, okay? Cuz I right. I picked some tough ones. All right. This episode was titled GameStop shenanigans. There were three shenanigans you reported on. Give me one of them at least. If you get all three, aces. Okay, so one of them for sure had to be them declaring themselves essential. Nope. Damn it. Keep going. <laughs> um, I'll give you a hint. Uh, one of them, them one of them closely followed them getting that money from Microsoft. Oh uh, yeah, so they <laughs> they moved all of the Switch stuff to the back of the store and all the Microsoft stuff to the front. Ding 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 which ding, was, which was fun. Yep. Uh, <laughs> also during that time, they did two other things that we found gross. Okay. Um, fuck man, I uh, I don't know. They do so it's much okay. dumb stuff. It's all right, man. You you got one, so I consider you did it. This is a very hard challenge, and I gave you no Yay. warning. You didn't do any homework because I didn't even tell you I was going to do it to you. <laughs> all right. The second thing they did is they started displaying only the top 100 games. Oh, God. Meaning if we wanted to go in and browse for that obscure title, we wouldn't know they needed to have it. You'd have to ask for it by name. Yeah, they don't do that anymore, by the way. Good, because that was stupid. <laughs> <Dumb shit. laughs> and top 100 the, games. Yeah. <laughs> The final thing they did was they asked employees to engage in a TikTok dance challenge that was mandatory, the prize of which would be working more hours at the store (laughs) and $100 for their general manager. These motherfuckers. Oh, man. (laughs) I can't believe I forgot those things. I know, right? I mean, because they've done so much since then. Yeah, and so has everybody else. It's been a wild COVID year, dude. I'm sure we're not the only podcast that started during the pandemic. And I've I've discussed on the show that I've been trying to start a podcast for a while. And I just got the idea that you would be the best person to start it with. And I'm glad I was right on that. We've been through a lot of bullshit this year. But for the most part, when I think about the podcast and what we reported on, it makes me smile. Mm, Yes, me too. I love it. I love it too. I love you. (laughs) Bromance. (laughs) <laughs> i can't wait until uh i mean you're pretty much fully vaxxed now we're gonna hang out soon yeah I am. oh my god i'm so excited to hug you and your entire family i'm gonna squeeze you guys so tight <laughs> also I, I got some exciting news but I, i'm getting ahead of myself there's one thing i want to challenge our listeners to whether you've been listening to us for a couple of weeks or you've been with us since the beginning it would be really meaningful to us if you would give us some feedback on what your favorite player two has entered the podcast memory has been and any responses we get we'll be sure to read on next week's episode so think back to your favorite episode your favorite story your favorite moment your favorite joke uh your favorite time when i said the wrong thing like uh dragon's dog was coming out uh, today and it wasn't (laughs) (laughs) whatever it was let us know and we'll, we'll we'll talk about it we really appreciate to hear from you guys on that all right, now the thing I was excited about. We might be getting a bulldog pretty soon. Ooh. I'm super excited. We just put in the application to adopt her today. Her name is Peaches. It's your bulldog named Peaches. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to see you guys. We're going to bring Peaches, hopefully. Peaches. <laughs> Peaches, TM. <laughs> yeah. Do you, think Nora would be, do you think Nora would be scared of a bulldog? Uh, Nora's scared of dogs, period. She's scared of... <sighs> animal spirit so she's really good know. with kids we hear that's what they tell us yeah so we'll know. see we'll, we'll find out i mean he's just a small around, yeah. yeah even around ken cage she got used to him a little bit kind she of. did she did she did that's true so. and he's a much bigger dog than peaches yeah so oh, okay 
All right. Another thing that happened recently, we guessed it on the Gamer Friends. Woo! We were on the Gamer Friends. We were on the Gamer Friends. I'm so sorry, guys. They, <laughs> they like to sing their titles, and they do a much better job than I do just now. <laughs> And just to update, the episode that we did on the Gamer Friends was actually their E3 extravaganza. Their format's different, where they'll break from format to do special episodes, like when they do their spoiler cast like we do, and then when they do their E3 coverage. So start to finish, we just talked nothing but E3, and we talked for like three hours. I doubt all of that's... (laughs) I doubt all of that's getting in. minutes. (laughs) Yeah, I doubt all of that's getting in. They're either going to break it into two episodes because we joked about doing that, or they may cut some. But we're going to be light on the rest of E3 because we covered the beginning, of course, last week. We're going to summarize it. And then to get the rest of our E3 coverage, go and listen to the Gamer Friends. Now, as far as recording, they haven't released the episode yet, but I imagine they may release it this weekend when we release our show. So be on the lookout if you follow us on Facebook or if you follow me on Twitter. I'll probably retweet their episode and we'll probably share it on our Facebook page so fans can listen in and check out the four of us talking about E3. I really like the show. I think we did a really good episode because you and I already like different games, but the two of them like even more like they don't fuck with horror games at all. But right. they love a lot of online multiplayer games. They love racing games. They love simulation games. So the stuff we don't typically cut. Co- and they're total Xbox guys, whereas we're more PlayStation right. and Switch. So I thought it was a really good kind of well-rounded group of, of people to talk about E3. And I, I'm really honored, and I felt really good to be a part of that. Yeah, it was, it was awesome, man. They don't like JRPGs either. <laughs> no, 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 no. My feelings. So, so we'll have to, ah, it's fine. I think we talked about it before. You cannot self-identify with the things you like. You're going to be disappointed every time. But I like the idea of being their horror game slash JRPG consultants. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, we hope to have them on again for our second year, and hopefully we can come back on their show sometime soon as well. The only other thing I can think of this week that happened is I hit a bit of a milestone. You know, I've talked to you recently how I've been kind of struggling with my fitness, my nutrition, my diet. Well, since Monday, I have counted my calories every single day, and I stayed under my calorie goal, and I was able to completely get through my planned exercise routine without tearing up my muscles so bad I couldn't walk the next day. (laughs) Congratulations. I finally built up the endurance of a normal human being, and I can exercise now. Woo! Yay! It's the little things. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I've successfully gone five days eating like a pig monster (laughs) okay fair enough okay we got different energies here but you know what it's all good Mm -hmm. we're both happy that's what that's the important thing oh yeah (laughs) so yeah no i I got to i finally got to a weight that was pretty close to before i lost a bunch of weight and i was like i can't let this stand i can't lose all that progress i got you know like sometimes you just look at yourself in the mirror and you're like okay this is the limit i gotta go back down now Uh, all right yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. You got me, buddy. Okay, Tommy. You, what are you, you doing? You're too big. <laughs> got to gotta bring it back down. So that's that's where I'm at, and hopefully I can stick to it. What I tried to do is pick an eating style and an exercise routine that's sustainable, so that way I can just keep doing it as a matter of course rather than to reach an immediate goal. And right. I think that's the secret to fitness anyways. We talked about it before, but you really want to pick a diet and an exercise routine, which I do believe you need both that is sustainable meaning you know we talked about calisthenics don't start directly into like 50 push-ups a day do like you know your your knee push-ups or your wall push-ups or your incline push-ups you know so whatever level where you can actually hit a large amount and actually feel that range of motion so that's what i'm doing right i'm Mm -hmm. doing little baby push-ups but it still works (laughs) (laughs) so yeah, yeah i'm pretty proud about that but to catch up this week Derek, i just gotta know man been playing any video games during this crazy frantic e3 week yeah so i've been jumping back and forth between a couple of games so the first one final fantasy 7 remake integrate mm-hmm. going back to the normal game and just seeing all the differences in the graphical effects and the 60 frames per second it's just 
It's amazing. We talked about it last week. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just... anything new or anything notable? Well, I was watching a performance, basically a side by side performance for the PS4 Pro version and the PS5 version mm-hmm. uh, on IGN. And basically, so you know when they blow up the reactor and then they're kind of in that underground sewage area where everything's kind of crumbled down? Not really sewage, I... but everything's just. No, I, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. So in the original game, it's just straight up clear. As if nothing happened, like the air is clear, there's no dust or anything. In the PS5 version, there's like a thick cloud of dust and like the light funnels through it to create this atmosphere that something just blew up on top of this place. Oh, okay. So it's, it's, you know, it's just real interesting to see things that you feel like were there before, but they definitely weren't. And that's just, I don't know, it's cool. Let me ask you a question, because I noticed this just a tiny bit when I was testing Intergray, but I didn't really go through it because I was testing it to, uh, you know, play the Yuffie mm-hmm. episode without having to, like, play it at all, like, go in super fresh. Right. It looked like during those kind of stealth loading segments where Cloud sidles in between something or goes under something that he went through a lot faster. Do you notice when you do those stealth loading sequences that the characters are going through a lot quicker, or does it depend on which type it is? I think it just depends. It looks like they were just going through the same amount, because they still have to travel the same distance, you know what I mean? Sometimes, yeah, but there are other times where they're not traveling very far, but they kind of loop through, like when you go uh, under something, where normally Mm -hmm. Cloud would kind of step more slowly to get through it to hide that loading. I noticed that he would just duck up up and under, and boom, he's through really quickly. Uh, Yeah, I don't know, man. Just a quick thing about ps5 loading times i recently acquired a base ps4 and i put in kingdom hearts 3 when i tell you it took two minutes for a bit to load up the game Mm -hmm. like from the from the title screen Mm -hmm. and you know when it shows you the picture of the game you're about to play it Mm -hmm. literally sat there for like two minutes wow and i was like does this does this shit work (laughs) that's crazy and then it came up i was like oh my god i cannot go back yeah, loading a file in Final Fantasy VII Remake, I know, is instantaneous. And when you get post-game and you jump from chapter to chapter, you're in there super quick. Yeah, it's amazing. But uh, moving on from Final Fantasy VII Remake, been playing Ratchet & Clank, actually beat it this week. And I know that Michael beat it too, so we're going to talk about our thoughts on this game. I'm going to let you go first. Yeah, let's do a quick review on Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, since both of us have played through the entire thing. I'd have to say, overall, it's excellent. I love the game. I have the minorest of minor complaints with it, and they're not even complaints. I feel like the music doesn't always pop in or sync with battles or atmosphere, and maybe that's something they can fix in a patch. I also feel like, while they do a whole lot, and I'm going to talk extensively about what they do with the whole multiple dimension thing. I think there was a missed opportunity to make the multiple dimensions more different from each other because you switch back and forth and it's the same enemies in both dimensions and it feels more like you're going from future past. You know what I mean? But those are minor, minor gripes. I would say that overall it was fantastic. It moved smoothly. The graphics were incredible. Like it's definitely a PS5 game, one of the few out there that you could not do on a PS4. When you get in-game, like really in-game, you have all of... I mean, they have... They took all of the traversal elements from previous games and just fine-tuned them, threw them in this game, added a few more, and I really like... I know it's supposed to showcase off the uh, the solid-state drive, but the whole grabbing your rift tether, you grab like a little tear in space and immediately warp to where it is. So right. instead of you traveling to a point, the point travels to you. It's just a mm-hmm. cool way to traverse. Like, I like the mechanic. It kind of saves your time a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was pretty dope. And when they incorporated hitting the crystals to go back and forth between dimensions while you're grinding and then going on, like, all the rails and the yeah. different swings and everything. Like, it was intense in the, in the best way possible. natural evolution of the gameplay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. through mm-hmm. the game, which was just, just great. It's great to see. Yeah, the writing was decent. I agree with you. It's a little bit more heartfelt this time. I think it's still, it's got a ways to go before it it gets to the heavy hitters, you know, like your God of Wars and your Last of Us type games. Yeah. But I feel like it was almost there. It was. It got really close. Just a little bit. 
I think because they were going for a more Disney ending, even though they explored some heavier themes, they couldn't really go there with it and take some arcs to what you would think would be their logical conclusion. Mm-hmm. Especially when it comes to, I don't want to ruin too much of the story, but when it comes to the relationship between Rivet and Kit, which are the alternate mm-hmm. universe analogs for Ratchet and Clank, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, I thought their story was very interesting, though, and I was intrigued. And, you know, you can guess a few things, obviously, along the way about how that was going to play out, but you couldn't guess how they were going to react. And the, the route that they chose, again, I thought was a little more Disney, which is fine. There's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that. And at the end of the day, this is a great game for kids as well as adults. So I'm glad that it had a lot of good messaging about accepting yourself, including your flaws, things like that. I mean, Rivet lost her arm and didn't seem fussed about it at all. She had a, a robot arm that she used. Clink right. actually loses his arm very early in the game. And Rivet doesn't see it as a default. She's like, you're just fine the way you are. And he comes mm-hmm. to it. They don't even fix his arm. He just comes to accept. Yeah, I have one arm now. Right. <laughs> Which exactly. is weird because he's a robot. Like you could easily yeah. fix his arm. But... I was wondering the whole game. I was like, oh, so he's just gonna have one arm this whole game, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which I mean, I, I get where they were going with that. They didn't want to immediately go, hey, you're broken. You need to be fixed. There was even a, a little bit of a story beat that happened where he was able to use that as a way to convince another robot that he's not necessarily broken just because he's a missing an arm, and that there are other things that can make him whole aside from getting his arm back. And I thought that was an interesting yeah. turn. Yeah, that was probably my favorite part of the game. Yeah, me too. It was, especially, it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, the whole the whole level was actually pretty cool. Yeah. So, yeah, what did you think? Fantastic, man. Like I said, a 10 out of 10. <laughs> yeah. For, or 5 out of 5 or 3 out of 3 or 1 out of 1. Like, it's just so good. Like you said, the writing was pretty much on point. Pretty Disney, but still really good. Yeah, I chuckled uh, a lot. Like, it was funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I really dug how many different gameplay elements were in the game. Like, the clank sections, the uh, rifts in the stages that you go into to get different armors. The glitch levels. Yeah, the glitch levels. Little glitch bot. She's cute. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Hell, the arena. <laughs> I actually really like the arena. I love a good and Ratchet Zer- & Clank Z- arena, yeah. Yeah, and Zircon <laughs> Jr., uh... <laughs> <laughs> or a- aka Invader Zim. <laughs> right. <laughs> Zircon Juniors. Uh, yeah. What, what do you call it? Armageddon Drum or something, something. Something wild. Yeah, I can't remember. But I will say that you definitely want to go and turn on subtitles, especially when Zircon is talking, because mm-hmm. he's always screaming his lines, which are funny, but it's going to be kind of hard to hear what he's saying, especially if he's talking over you trying not to die. <laughs> oh yeah, and when you're when you're previewing the weapon, Zircon Jr. does the narration of that as well. Yeah, this is great. He's got this a thirst great. for blood, and and it comes out when he describes the weapons for sure. Yeah, I will say uh, I wish they used Mrs. Zircon more as an actual character. Hmm. Okay. I mean, she simply was... because when she first shows up, when Ratchet shows up in the alternate dimension, and she's like, mm. "Oh, the Resistance! Yeah. Oh, I can't. Ooh, I'm so excited to be part of the Resistance." And then they just kind of, here's your weapons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that time. scene was, you know, that's a really good point you're bringing up. That's another, it's not, a, again, it's a minor gripe. but Yeah, it's very minor. The very beginning of the game feels so different from a Ratchet and Clank game in a good way, but then it quickly goes back to being a Ratchet and Clank game. So when you get to the first level after the plot sets in motion and your Ratchet sans Clank looking around to try to see if you can get your bearings when you dropped into the first city, it feels like a living, breathing city. It's neon. It's a little bit noir-esque. There's mm-hmm. some Big Brother shit going on because you're in an alternate dimension where... So Dr. Nefarious is actually Emperor Nefarious, and so mm-hmm. he's got all of the people in that dimension under his heel, basically. And there's personality, and you can tell that people live there. Whereas in the past, Ratchet and Clank worlds just feel like levels that you go through to tear shit up, which nothing wrong with that. And I, I dug that. I dug the atmosphere. I kind of walked around a little slower. was looking around at things. Mm-hmm. There was a club where people were hanging out. And I love the haptic feedback on the controller. Like, mm-ts, mm-ts, mm-ts. Yeah. like, you could feel the beat in the controller. It was really cool. And there's a lot of really cool stuff with the controller and the different guns. Like, this this game was oh, made yeah, for haptic. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, you, yeah it was like pulling the uh, blaster and it's be like yeah like that controller just come on yeah black hole gun the one that shoots really fast that one actually vibrates the controller when you fire it which feels really amazing um 
But yeah, there and like you said, Miss Zircon had a personality and she was a part of the resistance. She's like, oh, hey, you can go over here. And then Ratchet's like, thanks, right. Secret Agent Zircon. And she like giggles. And there's this, <laughs> yeah, there's a story element. And, and it kind of just tapers off a little bit. And again, there's still a story. There always is in Ratchet and Clank. But it felt like the level was a part of the story rather than the backdrop for you to tear shit up and occasionally have a cutscene. Right. And I, I think they had an idea in their head to keep it like that when they started, but then quickly just fell back on old, the old faithful of dump you in a level with a bunch of enemies, get from point A to point B. You know what I mean? Yeah. So nothing wrong with that, but I saw a hint of something different that I really liked, and hopefully they can explore that a little bit further. I don't know if they got rushed or if they had to drop certain elements they were going to do or it just didn't jive with the pacing of the gameplay. Who knows? Yeah. Well, here's to the to the next Ratchet and Clank. Hopefully we get it before PS6. Right? <laughs> yeah. Can we go back to PS3 where we got like five of them Four. mugs or six? Yeah. <laughs> There's a bunch, man. It was great. All right. Well, what was the uh, what was the final game that you played this week? The final game that I played was... Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. This is the new Souls-like Final Fantasy game from Square Enix and Team Ninja. We played the demo, Mm -hmm. and it looks like a Souls game, and it also looks like a PS3 game. A little bit. It's a little rough. It's a demo. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to hit on too much about it. We (laughs) talked about it a bit on the Gamer Friends episode, but, I mean, I, I feel like we don't know enough about the story to really make a judgment. We know that it's basically a Souls-like retelling of the original game. Yeah. But uh, what did you think about the the gameplay? The gameplay, there was definitely something there that was good. I was surprised, yeah, by how much I yeah. liked it. Yeah, I just, I'm not into, I can't take getting my ass kicked a million times. I cannot take <laughs> it. <laughs> so... You know, regardless of how I feel about the game, I'm not going to, I'm probably not going to play it. Although, there are difficulty modes. Yeah, what difficulty did you play the demo on? I played it on normal. Me too. Yeah, so maybe I could throw it on easy, which, you know, in a game like this, I definitely wouldn't mind doing that. Mm -hmm. But I'd be pissed off if I still died a million times. (laughs) Yeah. On easy. So, for you gamers with a capital G, gamers TM... Not the Patreon gamers, the capital G, but you know, the right. other ones. <laughs> mm-hmm. You you uh, probably won't want to play this game because it's got difficulty modes, which apparently will ruin a Souls like game. So oh yeah, it's ruined already because it. Yeah. it has an e- easy mode. So yeah. um, you figure you, you could just play it on chaos. hard and it wouldn't matter, but it does. So yeah. <laughs> well, I chaos <clears throat> chaos. <laughs> Watch the trailer, guys, because he says chaos like sixty eight <laughs> times. <laughs> I yeah, the story is generic. It's a little edge lordy, which is going to turn some people off. I find it charming in a really dumb try hard type of way. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoyed how stupid it was. The characters are pretty bland and not really fleshed out so far, but that could change. Again, we got a very small snippet of the story. Yeah, I was um, actually watching a Maximilian dude play the demo. Yeah, and when he got to the final boss, he's and uh, he said his little spiel. He was like. Oh, they actually think this is cool. <laughs> oh, <Aww. laughs> they think this is cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, hilarious. yeah, it's a little try hard, but again, I, f- I find that endearing for whatever reason. What I would say is, in comparison to Dark Souls, because there are comparisons to be made, mm-hmm. it feels like leveling up happens faster and affects your character performance better. I feel like you can level up all day in Dark Souls and still get one-shotted. Fuck you, right? Yeah. Whereas this, because you constantly get skills to put into your little jobs and you can switch between two jobs to help out your stamina depletion, and we'll talk about how it depletes in a moment, I think that that really helps give you an edge and help you to make a few mistakes and still stay in the game, so to speak. Yeah. I... We'll say that paired with the difficulty means I probably will go ahead and give this a go, even though I did have such trouble with the end boss. We'll talk about that soon, too, that (laughs) I felt I felt like I still had recourse to get through without having it be a slog. I'd I'd agree with that. So the way that you fight in this game is pretty interesting. I like the battle system. You have two attack types. You have your main attack, which doesn't use up any stamina. In fact, no attacks use up stamina. Stamina is done differently. And like I said, I'll explain that soon. 
but you have your regular attack, and then you have, like, say if you're a warrior, you'll have, like, a special swing attack, or you'll unlock other combo attacks that can use up MP. And you only start with two bars of MP, so, like, two of those attacks that can drain it. However, they have a parry system that I, th I found interesting. So you can do your dodges and blocks, and those help with attacks that you can't be blocked, which are color-coded. It'll You'll see, like, a red name come up above the enemy's head. Or if you just... You want to block physical attacks. There is a parry system that I find very interesting. You basically hold up like a, a sphere of light, and that's what parries the blows. Mm -hmm. And I found the parry window in this game to be much more forgiving than, say, in a Souls game. Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah. I was hitting them parries like a mofo. Yeah, me I too. Was, woo. Yeah, it was, I was bad. I found it <laughs> like when I'm when I knew an attack was on its way, I could parry and pretty much I'd be okay. So that was nice. And the fact that they put so much emphasis on parrying, it's good that they open the window a little bit. So you have a higher window for parrying. If you successfully parry, it will not only replenish your MP, which gives you more of those special attacks, it'll increase your maximum MP bar up until you reset at, at this game's version of a bonfire. Yeah. And... Another thing that can happen, if a monster uses its signature attack, like, say, with the goblins, they do, like, what was it, like a, a stone, stone toss? Stone throw. Yeah. yeah, stone throw. Or the bombs, they throw fire. And even the boss had its own signature, like, attack that you could absorb. If yeah. you parry it, you absorb charges of that attack that you can use. And again, it's separate from your MP bar. So, for example, stone throw would give you, like, two or three charges of stone throw. I can't remember how many. And then you yeah. could just do that back at an enemy until those run out. And again, they'd be replenished if, again, you absorb that type of attack. Very interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as how the stamina actually works, when you parry successfully, or when you get attacked and block, or even when you get hit, all of these things will deplete your stamina. And if you take an attack and your stamina depletes completely. So say you parried too much and then you took a blow, you know, tough cookies actually, you'll get knocked <laughs> down and stunned. And tougher enemies, especially bosses, once you're knocked down, they're like, oh, it's go time. And they'll yeah. pile on the damage. So you suffer mm -hmm. greatly if you do not keep an eye on your stamina bar and you let it deplete. There is a cool mechanic I mentioned earlier where you can switch between jobs with the push of a button. So you can have, say, a warrior fighter class or a warrior and dragoon or mage or black mage or whatever mm. that will that has its own stamina bar so if you find that your stamina is getting low and you think there may be a chance that you could get hit because the fight's frantic or you're fighting against a boss you can quickly switch to the other job so you have a reserve of stamina or alternatively if you've run out the stamina on both and, th and they'll run back up over time as long as you're not getting hit you can back off from the battle a little bit and let your friends take over you can't control yeah, see, the other two characters. Oh, okay, yeah. You can't control yeah. the other two characters in the demo. I don't know if you're going to be able to in the full game, but you can revive them. If they get downed, you can run up and press the uh, the touchpad to revive them, and you only get so many revives for battle, but it's pretty generous from what I've seen. Yeah, that's another thing. The two characters, they don't do anything. They don't do much. They can distract they, they an enemy, but that's move. about it. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, why are you here? <laughs> yeah, be more aggressive. They're aggressive. Why aren't you aggressive? Right. right. It's trying to eat you. <laughs> so, yeah, I really enjoyed how fast I was leveling up and tweaking my character. It has loot drops like you wouldn't believe. Most mm -hmm. monsters that you fight will drop a level something gear that you can equip. And some gear actually has a bonus on it that will give you more experience points for a particular job, even if you don't have that job equipped, which is cool. I really like that. So if you're in a mage job and you're doing mage activities and getting points towards your mage job, if your helmet has the little warrior symbol, you're also getting points towards warrior progress. And that's neat. I like that. Yeah. Now that takes me to the final boss. The final boss is Garland, which is the first boss you fight in the original Final Fantasy game. And then eventually, spoilers, you, you fight him later. <laughs> right. That guy is a fucking asshole. <laughs> and you can go to my Twitch page right now and, and until it ages out and then you can just go to YouTube and you can actually see me fight this guy for just under an hour before I was able to defeat him because I refused to lower the difficulty or level up more. I was yeah. like, nope, we're doing this now. And it took me an hour 
it was just memorizing his moves. And what I liked about that first battle is it really forced me to reconcile with how to effectively take advantage of the battle system. I had to learn his attacks. I had mm-hmm. to learn how to effectively parry. I had to, I had to learn how to manage my stamina because if I didn't learn all of these things, there was no way in hell I was beating this guy. Right. The only other thing I'll mention, and this is kind of a, a mechanic in the game that I mean, it's indicative of Team Ninja. Enemies have stamina bars too, and there are attacks that can deplete stamina quickly, even more quickly than HP. If you get an enemy completely depleted of stamina or to low HP, either one, you can do a quick finisher. You like turn them into red crystals and they explode in blood and your character gets all bloody. It's weird. It's a bloody Final Fantasy game. (laughs) Yeah, he runs up like, (laughs) just, you know, like he'll he'll dunk bombs like a basketball after he turns them into a spiky red crystal. It's weird and cool. I like it. Those are my thoughts. I'm definitely intrigued. I'm hoping that they can clean it up. I'm not coming to this game for a story so far. Maybe they'll change my mind. Right now I'm coming to it for just to see how they redo the original Final Fantasy game and for the battle system, which I actually really enjoyed. I think it's unique and interesting. So Yeah. Yeah. Overall I had a good time with it. Yeah, me too. Me too. The demo's out on PS five until July something. <laughs> I did not research <laughs> when. So if you're one of the lucky people out there to have a PS five, it's stealth dropped broken, but it is fixed. So you can go and re-download it now, or it should have been patched. You can go and play it on your PS5 now and check it out for yourself if you're interested. All right, let me get on to the games that I played, aside from those two. I also played Final Fight Streetwise this week, and I beat it. Yay! I hate it, but I love it, but I hate it. (laughs) It's dumb. I I think I had to try... I was down to, like, the final two bosses, and I had to retry the first one in the beginning of the episode twice. And then the I had, I think I was three tries for the final boss before I actually got it, which isn't terrible, but keep in mind that it took me like two hours so, <laughs> uh, to finish two bosses at the end of this game. Like, it's really tough. You really have to get an idea of the type of attacks you're going to anticipate, and you got to cheese it a little bit. You got to use the resources available to you. Like, there's boxes in the final stage where they'll explode and one has a health pack, one has a shotgun, one has a handgun, there's a Miramase sword and a bat and a knife. Good luck on how you use those. (laughs) So, because you don't get any second chances if you don't use them efficiently. So yeah, I'm finally on to a new beat-em-up. AOC, not the politician, but the video game, Age of Calamity, (laughs) she's dropping DLC and you can play as a guardian, which I think is kind of cool. And that actually... That drops today, actually, as of the time of recording. It'll be two days ago by the time we drop this episode. So expect me to be playing some more Age of Calamity this Monday. And then after that, hopefully I can have you over and we'll play some Urban Rain. What do you think? Oh, hell yeah. All right. do it. It's a date. The only other game I played this week is Judgment. Not much additional I need to say from last week other than I love that game. It's awesome. And I'm going to be going back to it shortly after I finish 100%ing Ratchet and Clank. So... I am so glad that you love that game. It's good. Like, I haven't even played all the way through it. and Not only yeah, do I love it, bad. but it's like, okay, now I definitely got to go back and play the other Yakuza games, even the ones where they don't have an English option because I just want to go back to Camborocho some more. So mm-hmm. I'm into it. I'm, I'm getting back to the I other games I can't play a recent. Yakuza game in English. I'm sorry. I can't do it. No, I understand. I get it. I yeah. just, they talk so much and so fast (laughs) and the plot is so heavy that I get tired during the Mm -hmm. cutscenes from reading. You know what I mean? Like I don't mind a subtitle sleep and come back tomorrow. (laughs) Yeah. In fact, I actually prefer subtitles when it comes to live action movies. I mean, I'm a a Kung Fu buff, you know this, and I love my Kung Fu movies in subs, not dubs. But when it comes to animation and this includes video games for whatever reason, I got to have those dubs. I don't know. Mm -hmm. You call me a, a scrub or a casual, whatever you want. That's just the way it is with me. So. All right. You're on the lowest tier, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a casual. There you go. All right. So this week in news. Lots hey. of E3 stuff. We're going to get to it in just a second. There's one other thing that happened aside from E3 that I wanted to quickly cover. Pokemon Unite. There's a little Pokemon event where they dropped Pokemon Unite. This is coming out really soon. It's going to come out 
next month on the Switch and in September on mobile. It is free to play, which is like, uh, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Or what they call free to start. I don't know what that right. means. <laughs> it's just like, you've been playing it for 30 days. Give us some money or we'll take your thumbs. So, <laughs> but it's an interesting concept. It's five on five team battles where you start with level one Pokemon and throughout the match, they will level and evolve. There are no type advantages, and the focus is on the roles of each Pokemon, whether they be labeled as an attacker, defender, speedster, support, or all-rounder. And it's kind of a cross between fighting and, like, soccer. Essentially, the five-on-five teams will gather energy by defeating Pokemon in the match. And then that energy they gather, they need to go and deposit in the opposing team's goal zones. And, of course, the team with more points is the one that wins. There's a cool trailer out if you want to check out in, in action. The not gameplay action, like the actual animated trailer, makes the game look a lot cooler than when they actually switch to the gameplay. Yeah. And the gameplay is not bad. It's just it looks way cooler when you look at the video. But mm-hmm. it's overhead, and it looks like it might be neat. It's, it looks like a mobile game I might actually play. Maybe even just put it on my Switch. I don't know. I'm going to check it out because there's really no reason not to. It is free. And we'll probably talk about that when it drops next month. Just for Pokemon fans out there, you got something new to check out if you're interested. All right. All right. So when it comes to E3, we covered a few things last week. And then, of course, a bunch of other stuff happened. Now, as we mentioned earlier in the episode, we covered E3 extensively with the Gamer Friends. So mm-hmm. I am not going to run over every single thing we discussed on that show. Once the Gamer Friends episode comes out, I will share it around for you guys to check out. I think you should. I think it was a great, fun episode. I was super awkward on it, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was great, and it was fun to hang out with those guys. So what I want to do is just kind of bring up the presentations of notes since our last episode. And then if you have anything to speak on it, we will go ahead and do that. The Capcom presentation. Anything to say about that? No, it was trash. It was trash. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I mean, they literally well, didn't the, announce the best, anything new. Yeah, the best thing about the Capcom presentation was Herlock Sholmes. Yes. <laughs> in Ace Attorney. <laughs> and somehow simultaneously the worst thing. Go right. figure. Mm. <laughs> the indie showcase. You watch any of that? Uh, I don't think I did, no. All right. There was a lot of good indie games we're going to talk about, I think. But for the Indie Showcase, they had this game called Fallen Aces. It's by New Blood. It's a noir-style first-person shooter a la Classic Doom with the 2D cel-shaded sprites. And it's releasing on Steam soon. And it's just you going around and punching and hitting and shooting cardboard cutouts of noir-style gangsters. Good stuff. Awesome. Cool. All right. Anything to say about the Square Enix show? It was pretty much trash, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like we saw we saw marvel's guardians of the galaxy which got leaked i think the day before mm-hmm. it did not impress me at all like i like kind of like some of the character designs not star lords uh the fact that you only get to play a star lord in the guardians of the galaxy game just seems off to me mm-hmm. like you get to play as the least interesting character mm-hmm. you've got a giant tree and a raccoon but <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh they say there are going to be no microtransactions we'll see (laughs) but we'll see they usually add them in afterwards but yeah i got nothing to add there anything else on square enix (laughs) babylon's fall i was very excited for that game platinum first heard about it now i am not (laughs) yep it's a live service game (laughs) fuck right off it looks worse than it did when they first announced it yikes which they probably it probably wasn't going to be a live service game and then it turned into one so they're like well we got to make it look shittier (laughs) <laughs> so won't be playing that at all sorry mm. sorry platinum you, dis- sorry, you platinum. disappoint me <laughs> <laughs> yeah they had some updates on marvel's avengers nobody cares yeah, uh, black panther stuff well, man. yeah pixel remaster collection the first six final fantasy games on steam and mobile but nothing's changed nothing for console like even if you just put it on console just put it on consoles yeah i Maybe don't know not. we'd love that but yeah. whatever yeah, because they're already on mobile and Steam. I don't get it. I don't <laughs> understand. Like, what are you doing differently? I don't get it. Anyways, Life is Strange Remastered was talked about because, of course, that's a Square Enix game. Uh, right. It's coming September 25th. True Colors, September 10th. Great. 
we've talked about Stranger of Paradise extensively. They announced it during their show and still dropped that demo that was completely broken for two days. But mm -hmm. there you go. It's coming to everything but Switch 2022. That's it for Square Enix. Uh, did you have any notes or thoughts on the Xbox Bethesda showcase? Uh, I mean, not really. The Plague Tale Requiem looked dope, but I still haven't played Plague Tale Innocence, so I yeah, can't you should really do speak that. on that too much. You should do um, that for sure. I definitely want to. Psychonauts 2 looked good. Yeah. That looks like a lot of fun. I didn't play yeah. the original, but, you know, it's whatever. Uh, Starfield is now going to be exclusive yeah, we to know that. Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going to be on Game Pass, so that's cool yeah. whenever that comes out. <laughs> Come over and play on my Xbox <laughs> Series X that you get me. That's going to be fine. Right. <laughs> and uh, as far as the, the rest of the Xbox conference, man, there's not much that uh, tickled my fancy. Hmm. Yeah, I was excited for Diablo 2 Resurrected. That's looking good. Coming out September. Yudin Chronicle 100 Heroes, the successor to Suikin' In. Awesome. <laughs> Somerville, the jump ship studio from the founders of Play Dead who did Limbo and Inside. That looks cool. Mm -hmm. You're surviving an alien invasion in a 2D adventure with your family. Neat. Okay. And, and that's about it for me. I mean, Stalker 2 Hard Arch Noble looks kind of cool, like a better version of Fallout, maybe. Right. Um, we'll, we'll wait and see on that. So, yeah. Now, one thing I think you didn't get a chance to catch that I didn't want to cover. Did you watch any of the Guerrilla Collective showcase where they platformed like a million indie games from around the world? No, I didn't see that. There was good shit at that show. So I'm going to very quickly, rapidly announce the stuff that I thought was interesting if people want to look it up. The first game they showed, or one of the first games, was called Fire Girl Hack and Slash Rescue. It was a 2D side-scrolling firefighting game. Where you like save people and you can use your fire hose as like a jetpack. It looked awesome. So cool. into that if you want to fight fires. There's a game called BPM, aka Bullets Per Minute. And it kind of reminded <laughs> me of a 3D Doom like version of Crypt of the Necro Dancer. So it's rhythm based. And every time you reload your gun or shoot your gun, it's to the beat. And same thing with the enemies. And it seems really neat. It's on PC right now. But it's going to be coming to PS4 and X-Bone sometime this summer. So here in the next month or two. So look out okay. for that if you're interested in rhythm and shooty games. Hunt the Night says it's coming to PC and console soon. Whatever that means. <laughs> it looks like an awesome 2D overhead action adventure game with really, really strong horror themes. And you know me and horror games. I'm into it. Mm -hmm. You're going to be all up in that. All up in it. Unmetal which is a comedy stealth game based on the original Metal Gear on MSX. It looks hmm. really funny. There's a demo right now on Steam. Sable, that's coming out September 23rd. Very beautiful art style. The frames kind of skip like the Spider-Verse. I think they showed it at the Summer Games Fest thing that Jeff Keighley did. They showed it there too, mm -hmm. I believe. Looks like open world exploration. That's going to be on Xbox and PC. There's a game called Death Trash. And the writing and the themes give me, they remind me heavily of I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream. And it's got a mix of like Wasteland Punk or the OG Fallout style gameplay of the original Fallout games crossed with cosmic horror. They're constantly talking about giving people meat and do you want some more of the meat? Here's the meat. Mm. It's kind of gross. <laughs> nice. And it's coming to Steam Early Access pretty soon. There is a sequel to Serial Cleaner which was uh, oh. developed by Draw Distance. It's called Serial Cleaners, although not multiplayer, as the name would imply. <laughs> oh. I know, right? May maybe, but they didn't say anything. There was no multiplayer confirmed or shown. But it's coming out this year to PC and console, so keep an eye out if you're into that. Happy's Humble Burger Farm is a PlayStation 1 graphics-style fast food simulator where if you don't do well enough serving the fast food you may get attacked by some sort of monster. I'm not going to explain much, but it looks very trippy and weird. And it's a cross between a survival horror game and a fast food simulator with PS1 style graphics. What else do I need to say? It's, right. it's coming soon to Steam. That's all you need to know. The last thing I saw that was super interesting, and this kind of reminds me when we were talking about retro game challenge and the feeling of playing old games in your house. Yeah. There's this game called Arcade Paradise. It's coming out this year on everything. And basically what you do is you're running an arcade in the early 90s out of your parents' laundromat. <laughs> and what you do is you have an arcade machine. You set as high of a score as you can. 
so that customers will come in and spend a bunch of money trying to defeat your high score. You take the money you make, you buy more machines, you set more high scores, you make money. That's you see cool. the appeal here? Yeah, it's pretty neat. Yeah. Hmm. It's kind of like an endless endless game. Yeah, no, it sounds cool. I'm sure there is an end because I get doubt they can supply early 90s arcade cabinets to you all day. And obviously, right. the cool thing about it, what I like, is they don't license early 90s games, so they're making games that are imitations of those style games. And I just love mm -hmm. that. I love playing a game that's a spoof on a familiar game, you know, like an RPG that's meant to be like Dragon Quest, but made now. You know what I mean? That's right. neat. Yeah. IGN Expo, did you catch any of that? Uh, yeah, I did see some of the trailers that they showed for that. Oh, cool. What What did you, did you have anything you want to talk on about that? or? I ended up seeing the trailer for Sifu after we did Game of Friends, mm -hmm. and I'm excited for that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, he was kicking ass. And taking names, and I can't wait to check it out. Um, it looks like a really competent beat em up that's researched its martial arts really well and gives you. It looks like it's accomplishing what Rise to Honor was trying to do. Remember Jet Li's Rise to Honor? Yeah, I love that game. I love it too, but it didn't quite nail what it was going for, which was complicated kung fu in a video game. It was basically just mash the attack button and then watch Jet Li go all over the place. Right. <laughs> But yeah, uh, let's see. Bramble the Mountain King. Mm -hmm. That's a side scroll adventure. Might be 3D. We don't know. It looks pretty trippy. There's a, in the trailer, it shows the main character like stabbing something. Yeah. Over and over. And like blood a little psycho. Covering his and the main character's a little, little boy. Yeah, he's like a little boy. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's a, as you so accurately put it, a white lady white coming lady. out of the water. <laughs> white lady. <laughs> It yeah. looks like she's about trying to take him down for a little, for a little, for a little uh, drown in there. So yeah, scary. Looks uh, looks wild. All That's right, about it for me. That's it for me. Okay, okay. Well, we had Ollie Ollie World, which is 2D skateboarding with Adventure Time style graphics. That's coming out this winter on everything. Skatebird. It's little chubby birds on skateboards. Cute. Mm -hmm. It's coming out to everything but PlayStation, and that's Ooh. on August 12th. So it'll be on Switch. Oh, okay. Cool. Tunic, which is a really cute Zelda-like. It's got very colorful graphics, decent music. It's from a one-man development team. The developer, I think, is called Dicey, and he's been working on it for a really long time, but they're pretty close to completing it, and Xbox is hosting a demo for it right now. I don't know if it's Xbox exclusive, but so far all I can tell is I can only see it on Xbox, maybe PC. So I'll keep an eye out. If it ends up coming to more consoles, I'll let you know because I'll probably try it out. All right. Core Keeper. Core Keeper is by Pugstorm Games, and it looks like it's focusing on the mining portion of Stardew Valley. Have you ever played Stardew Valley? No, I can't get into those farming sims. Yeah, the mining portion is actually like a dungeon crawler because you end up fighting monsters and stuff, and you have to like craft weapons to be able to fight them off. Okay. So you're focusing on the combat of that and base building and your base being attacked. It looks like multiplayer. So a bunch of different players would be working together to try to defend the base and build it up, that type of thing. And there's like light farming in it for resource gathering. All right. So good stuff. That's coming uh, to early access late this year. Blacktail, which is the first game from developer parasite. That's coming to everything besides the switch. And it's a first-person adventure where you play as a witch, I guess. The character's name is Baba Yaga, a la John mm. Wick's The Boogeyman. <laughs> right. You attack with a bow and arrow, and you live in this weird house. And there's three children kind of narrating the trailer and the game, and they're very unreliable because they keep changing the details of the story. But it looks mm. really interesting, so I'm going to be watching that. We got Death's Gambit Afterlife. That's coming to Switch 2021. 2D Metroidvania, really nice art, dark themes, cosmic horror, monsters, stuff like that. So, you know, I, lo I love me a Metroidvania that's more Vinia than Metroid, definitely. Right. <laughs> Martha is dead, and that's a morbid folktale about another white lady. <laughs> it's like <laughs> a ghost lady. story. They didn't show a whole lot of gameplay, but the story itself is interesting. It's about this woman who was drowned in a lake by her lover, who was then later hanged because he admitted he drowned her, and then people go back there to either get killed by her or summon her for something. I don't know. Mm. And the last game, Haunted Space, which you saw the trailer for, really dope looking, mm -hmm. like beautiful graphics, space shooter where you're flying around spaceships and you can customize them. It looks like it's really competent in the, the dogfighting. 
Yeah. And then you run into some horror shit in space. <laughs> cool. That's coming so, to everything but Switch soon. Not a specified date. Just coming soon. All right. All right. So the last thing to talk about, and I saved this for last for a reason, because I feel like it's the best. I feel like maybe Xbox was a distant second for me at E3, mm-hmm. but to me, my favorite presentation for the games, not for the presentation that would go to Devolver last week, <laughs> right. but my favorite presentation <laughs> was Nintendo Direct. Yeah, same. So, want to quickly summarize that? I mean, what, what were the standouts for you? So, Kazuya for Smash. Kazuya for Smash. Obviously, one of, the, for one of the big ones. He has so many moves. So many. We don't, we don't know how we're going to fit that on a controller. And I actually saw a meme that <laughs> showed uh, Kazuya and Smash, and it showed me. Is it Sakurai? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it showed uh, Kazuya's face and Sakurai's face holding up him and Smash. And then <laughs> they were holding... <laughs> holding up one of his moves and it said like forward and then it had that star that you have in Tekken Mm -hmm. and then down diagonally down and then the (laughs) and then the button you press because if you don't know in Tekken when there's a star it just means you delay for Mm -hmm. just like a second or something Mm -hmm. and it just made the character that was looking at it all confused Uh, so Kazi is coming out on Smash they're doing a like a full blown presentation on him later this month yeah on the 28th Uh, I believe so we'll be checking yeah. that out. Yeah. Uh, Life is Strange Remastered Collection and True Colors are coming to Switch. Mm-hmm. A new Super Monkey Ball Mania. Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania is a collection of past games coming out October 5th. The Guardians game is going to be coming to Switch as well, although it looks like it's going to be streaming only. Yeah, like and a new control. Yeah. yeah. And a new Mario Party. Mario Party Superstars. Woo! It's going to have online play and games collected from all past Mario Party titles. And I'm really excited for this because Super Mario Party was doo-doo. <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy they're doing online play from Jump, too. That's great. Yeah. That's next... October 29th, by the way. Oh, yeah. And next we got Metroid Dread. It's mm-hmm. a 2D follow-up to Metroid Fusion. And I think a lot of people were confused because when it popped up, it said Metroid 5. And everybody was like, well, but y'all skipped Prime 4. It's a completely <laughs> different series of Metroid games. Yeah, yeah. Because I'll admit, I was the same way. I was like, Metroid 5? The hell? Ooh. But it's coming out October 8th, mm-hmm. and looks like the amiibo for Samus and the robot that follows you in the game and the special edition are already being bought by scalpers and bots. Unfortunately, as, yeah, those pre-orders know, can, just yeah. disappear. As soon, they, they literally disappear as soon as they pop up on Best Buy or yeah, Amazon and that's or just That's one of those things where you look at it and you're like, yeah, that's going to be gone. So yeah. you got to get on it. Uh, Mario Golf Super Rush gave a look at the game modes and gameplay. More characters and courses will be added as free updates post-launch. you love yep. to hear it. Yep. Uh, Monster Hunter Stories 2, Rings of Ruin. Looks like a fun Monster Hunter RPG. Lots of gameplay shown in the treehouse. Demo drops June 25th. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to play that. Looks really good. Yep. A I've new got, Warrior I got a special Wear. edition coming. Yay! <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. A new Warrior Wear. Warrior Wear, get it together. Two-player what? confirmed. Yes. Comes out September 10th. Can't wait. I we just actually sold. Sure. Yeah, I just sold Warrior Wear Touched. Oh, I uh, saw that you uh, you advertised that too. Good advertising. Yeah. yeah, this yeah that's weird. So a little seg- segue real quick. Oh, okay. It seems like stuff I've been posting has been selling. So I don't. Somebody's I don't following know. you, dude. Yeah, somebody's following me and, and liking my shit. So I really appreciate it. Whoever you are, if you're listening, thank you. Yeah. Because you're helping put food in my belly and my baby's bellies, and I love you. Next, we finally got some info on Shimigami Tensei Five. Some non-leaked really... info, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's going to be releasing November twelfth, mm. and we got a little gameplay trailer. It looks really dope. The graphics on that look really good. Yeah, I'm excited. Unnaturally good, and it just keeps pointing towards a Switch, Switch Pro. revision. Switch, Switch Pro, Pro. so yep. you know, Switch Pro confirmed. We got Danganronpa Decadence, which is a three-game collection of Danganronpa 1 through 3 and also Danganronpa S Ultimate Summer Camp Virtual Board Game. I can't wait to get that. I've been interested in the series for a long time. It's basically a visual novel, murder mystery type thing. Mm. A psychotic teddy bear locks you up and makes you play his game. And can't wait to play that. Uh, Fatal Frame, Maiden of Blackwater, is going to be releasing on the Nintendo Switch and actually, Xbox and PS5 later yeah. this year. 
Yeah, that's port so that's, from the Wii U exclusive. That's awesome that it's getting a second breath because, I mean, again, hardly anybody had a Wii U, even less people bought it. So I'm glad that it's getting mm-hmm. new life. And I think awesome. it was, I think it was a Japan exclusive as well. Because did I don't it not come out in Wii U in US? I don't think we got it. Interesting. I've literally never seen it. <laughs> yeah, I'm extra uh, happy then to, to be able to play it. So, yep. Yep. Next, we got Advance Wars Reboot Camp. It's a remaster of the first two Advance Wars games that were mm-hmm. on Game Boy Advance. So it's nice to see Nintendo paying attention to older properties and realizing that we, as the consumers who love their games, want to play their old shit, yeah. update it, or new games in the series. Yeah, good-looking uh, remaster, too. I like how they updated the art. Right, and I'll let you take it away on the rest of the Sure. News. Well, I already briefly mentioned that AOC was getting DLC dropping on the 18th, so that already happened, and I'll be playing that tomorrow for the listeners listening on the day that this drops but basically monday for the next beat em up we got another game and watch theme so we had for the 35th anniversary of mario we had the mario game and watch which i went out and bought when this was announced because we just learned that we got a legend of zelda game and watch which i'm definitely getting i already had that bad boy pre-ordered oh, so, yeah. oh yeah so the legend of zelda game and watch will actually pack in aside from like a link themed original game and watch game and the clock, you know, the watch part. <laughs> You're also mm-hmm. getting the original NES Legend of Zelda and Zelda 2, as well as the Game Boy version of Link's Awakening, which I think is awesome. It's a really cool little piece of history packed into the Game & Watch. I love it. That's to commemorate his 35th. And we finally got an extended trailer showing a bit of game mechanics and gameplay for Breath of the Wild 2. Yay. Super awesome. So it looks like we may at least have two levels, possibly three. We're going to be floating down from an island. We saw Hyrule Castle float up into the sky. Zelda fell down into like a cave, so she might be down there. Link's arm got all corrupted and messed up, but then he absorbed Sheikah abilities through it. He can do there's some, some time manipulation I saw in the, in the trailer mm-hmm. and some new powers surrounding how he uses you know like stasis, things like that. And that's going to be dropping in 2022. So super excited about that. And that that was E3. That was a <laughs> super a fast lot. E3. Yeah. Again, yeah. for even more, you can go and listen to the Gamer Friends, and we'll share that episode. But we just kind of wanted to quickly recap on our show for our listeners some of the things that stood out to us. And, yeah, I'm really impressed with the slate of indie games, and I hope they get more love and that people were interested in them. Because I heard a lot of people complain about E3 this year. That it was weak, and they didn't see what they wanted to see. We're coming off of the year of COVID, and if you're paying attention to all games and not just the big AAA titles, there actually was a lot of cool shit that was talked about this year, so I wanted to make sure that wasn't completely overlooked. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I think IGN has a pretty good summation article of E3 if you want to go and, and look at the individual showcases or read about them. And then, of course, you can go and just type into YouTube... Indie Showcase E3 2021, Guerrilla Collective E3 2021. You'll get collections of trailers that you can just watch. You can check all these out for yourself. And I'd highly recommend it because some of them look awesome. So, all right. Well, I think that about covers it for gaming news. So, I just got to know, Derek, this week, what you feeling? I am feeling the Masters of the Universe Revelation trailer. Mm. This is a new He-Man animated series that's coming from the same people that did Castlevania on Netflix. And it's a continuation of the original show that Mm. aired 40 years ago. Now, I'm not going to sit here and act like I watched the entire show and I know all the plot points and all the characters. I will tell you that I watched the same one or two VHSs over and over and over and over (laughs) again. (laughs) And I also watched the early 2000s masters of the universe show that came out so when it comes to he-man i have a deep respect and love for the series Hmm. the trailer music was i need a hero and it's one of three properties that played the song this week the others being guardians of the galaxy and episode two of loki marvel loves that song i guess (laughs) yeah i was like we can't get away from this song this week what's going on i don't know but when i tell you it looks great it looks amazing uh, it gives me chills when it gets to the point where he says, I have the power. I get chills <laughs> every time. And I've watched it like 15 times. So That's awesome, man. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't fail. I know you were telling me like when they do Thundercats, let you know. Speaking of Thundercats, 
I was at Goodwill today, and I found a Thundercats lunchbox yeah? from 1985. Where? That's cool, man. Yeah. It's got some rust on it, but yeah, it's really dope. But uh, maybe maybe Thundercats will be next. Who knows? If yeah. this pops off. So... I'm yeah, going to watch what I'm it. Feeling this week. Yeah, like you said, I I uh, we were talking about it offline. I have no emotional attachment to He-Man whatsoever, but I love what they did with Castlevania and I think that the story concept is there. So I'd be interested to see what they do with it. I'm going to check it out. It might make me a new fan of He-Man. Oh yeah. So, well, yeah. So, what are you feeling, Mike? This week, well, to continue my theme of Pride Month, and celebrating LGBTQ plus creators in our collective gaming space, I thought I would go ahead and feature, I think, a channel that needs no introduction, but I wanted to talk about it anyways. You know who Jim Sterling is, right? Yeah. Jim Sterling recently transitioned to be non-binary and goes by James Stephanie Sterling now, but also is okay with being referred to as Jim Sterling. And they lost a lot of subscribers because of it, like a ton. I think 100,000 in one day. It was dumb. Damn. What a dumb reason. I know. Like, if you <laughs> subscribe to somebody for their content and they physically become more like what they feel like inside, but the content doesn't change, you're kind of an asshole for that. You know that, right? Yeah, because it doesn't have anything to do with you. Exactly. So okay. my call to our listeners is if you haven't already checked them out, Go ahead and go to their YouTube channel, take a look, take a listen, subscribe if you dig the content they're putting out because they could really use some love right now, especially in light of their transition and how it's been received by some of their more shitty fans. So, Yeah, all right, sounds good. Now that we're at the end of our episode, we've got to go ahead and pay those dues, so we're going to break for an ad, and then we'll be right back to close it out. All right, and we're back. What a wonderful ad that was. It's the same mm. ad we always play. Maybe somebody Beautiful. will actually, somebody else will actually take notice. Who knows? In the meantime, to pay those dues, Derek, if the people are interested in them gamer goodies, possibly more, where can they locate you at? Check out the stuff you have in your store. So they can check out everything I have for sale at ebay.com slash str slash gamer goodies and more. They can follow me on Instagram at GamerGoodiesMore and Twitter at Goodies underscore more. I'm posting stuff, trying to post stuff every day, but you know how life goes. So, mm -hmm. you know, I do it when I can. So check me out. I think you're doing all right, man. Well, also, you can find us at our main hub at anchor.fm slash player two is under the pod. And we post episodes every single Sunday. We can be listened to at that hub or anywhere you can find podcasts available. That includes Breaker, Google Podcast, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Apple Podcast, and Spotify. You can also find us on Facebook and YouTube. Facebook.com slash Player2 has entered the pod. The YouTube channel is called Player2 has entered the podcast. And we put notifications of new episodes as they drop if you'd like to subscribe or follow us there. You can follow me personally. I'm on Twitter at Mike Peterson AL, and I also do Twitch streaming, twitch.tv slash mcpaperstacks, and you can check the schedule, but I typically stream Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Fridays. And finally, we have a Patreon. So if you'd like to support our Patreon and consider throwing a few bucks our way to help support the show, all that money will go back into the show to make it an even better experience for our listeners. You can visit patreon.com slash player2 is under the pod. And check out the different tiers to see if something interests you and helps support us. We'd really appreciate it. And that is our show. And what a show it was. And we'll see you guys next time. All right. Love you. See you next week. Bye-bye. Peace.